In today's video, I am shooting this thing. It's the Arc Vector, a £90,000 all-electric superbike. And as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the coolest looking things on two wheels. I was super excited to shoot this thing, so let's get started. So the shoot took place here inside the Bike Shed Motorcycle Club in Shoreditch in East London. It's got these great vaulted ceilings with this exposed brickwork and this industrial rigging overhead. Now it is actually a public motorcycle club so the bikes that you see here are all owned by the members of the public and people are coming and going during the shoot. Now I really like this as it adds context to the place. This is a bike shoot with other bikes around it, it all just fits. In terms of my kit, I'm keeping it simple with a 2470 lens and using one off-camera light that I'm controlling using the controller on top. Let's get the light stand all set up. It's only the one light I'm using, keeping it very, very simple. This light is more powerful than a speed light, um, but not quite as powerful as some of my main studio strobes, but in the darker space in here, it's got more than enough power to light the bike. Obviously, using a sandbag to make sure that it doesn't topple over and smash. I have learned that lesson the hard way. I'm just using a two x four softbox and a diffuser on the front because I know that I want really nice soft light on this bike. So I'm going to try and get the light as much in position as I can before we bring the bike in so that we can just get it in place and get shooting. Having the controller does really help set settings so I don't have to keep reaching up once the light is in place over the top of the bike. Oh and it works, that's great. Good to know. Here we are, some burly men bringing the bike into place. I can't be trusted to do that. Oh no, wait, there I am. That's nice of me. What a good helper. So we've just got a stand that helps the bike stand up by itself. Just like that. I like this shot because it's right in the middle of the frame. We've got the nice overhead stuff pointing down towards it. It's a good angle for a hero shot. Now we just bring the light into position. I want it up nice and high so it really cascades down onto the bike. I know that I want a really lovely soft light falling on the bike and this is a great way to make that happen. Sandbag, good lad. So here's the main shot. As my finger is pointing out, those pipes overhead are forming great leading lines towards the bike itself. I think this is a really cool looking scene, particularly with the bikes on both sides. But I need to get my ambient shot first. So I need to make sure that I am using no flash but I'm using a shutter speed that's low enough to capture the ambient light. In this instance, I think about an eighth of a second. And a low ISO, there we go. So we take that shot. Hopefully it should come out a little bit underexposed, exactly like it has done, because I want to keep a good moody atmosphere to these photos. And then I get the light exactly where I want it to. And because I don't have a proper remote release, I'm just using my cable and I have to go back and forth, moving the light a little bit, taking the shot and then moving back to the light. It is not an elegant way of shooting, if I'm honest. It's a little bit repetitive, but eventually you should have all those photos ready to go. I think I took about eight to so for this main shot of the bike. When we look at that series of images on the back of the camera, we can see how that light moves across the bike with each different frame. I'm 
Now I'm going to be using basically the same technique, but from a slightly different angle, showing more of the front of the bike. Again, it's a case of getting that light into position and then getting the shot and going back, moving the light, essentially just like light painting like you would with an LED light panel. But I prefer using soft boxes because you have a lot more control about where that light actually spills. With an LED, I tend to find that light just goes everywhere and you're much more limited in post about how you can actually put that together. This process might be a bit more fiddly to shoot, but I find you get much more precise results. And here's the finished shot. I love the soft light on the bike and the flare we've got from having the light overhead, which adds a lot of drama to this shot. Now I'm going in on some other details, including the lovely leather of this seat. And I'm making sure to use the live view so I can zoom right in to make sure that my focus is absolutely pin sharp on that leather detail. So now my camera is fixed on the tripod, but I'm hand holding the light so that I can more easily move it around so it falls exactly where I want it to. I was finding it quite awkward having to move the light stand around so I've got my camera on a nice high viewpoint and I can just move that light in to put it exactly where it needs to to highlight this copper badge I suppose. It might look like a weird way of working but it really does make things much easier for me. So now I'm going for another hero shot of the bike. Oh, and there's a guy just walking into frame. Yep, you do you. This is cool. Off he goes. So again, I'm trying to light paint using the strobe by moving it as I take each photo. Oh, he's back. Just taking my photo. No big deal. But I have an idea of how to make this shot a little bit cooler and it involves taking off the softbox and moving the light around the back. By firing it bare bulb into the camera, oh, battery's dying, we get this cool starburst effect which adds some amazing drama to the back of the scene. All I need to do then is move the light onto the other side, take another shot, and suddenly we've got lights on both sides of the bike. By combining all those images together in post, we get this, a beautifully lit bike with some really interesting drama in the background by using those lights. Interesting use of the MacBook Pro, using it as a flag to try and block the light from falling on certain parts of the bike. Just helps in that top right hand corner to not get too much light spill, just controlling those highlights. Now I've got the camera up high and the light as overhead as is possible to be to get an even highlight. Now, what I've actually done on this is I have duplicated that highlight and flipped it over so that it's perfectly even on both sides as it just wasn't possible to get it exactly even in shooting. Going down low for some detail shots. I love the form of this spike, the curves, it's beautiful. Now giving it a bit of a clean just to get rid of some of the dust. Now there's a lot of copper detail on this and I didn't want to polish that up so much as I really like the sort of tarnished look that it's got. It adds some real great texture. Now 
Get in low. And even lower. What a hero. There are loads of bikes kept in here. All these old classics. They look really, really cool. As I say, these are all owned just by members of the public. I'd love to get in touch and do some individual shoots of some of these. And hey, cool new angle. Where have I gone? Wandered off in the middle of a shoot. It's bad form. Oh no, wait, I'm bringing in a light. That's good form. Well done, me. I'm shooting straight down the bike doing some selective focus right on the back. I'm doing another face on shot and now I want to bring that light down low so it's only edge lighting that left side of the bike. It does take a little bit of manipulation of the softbox to get it falling exactly as I want to. And I've dropped my camera angle down even lower. Once I've got it on one side, it's a case of moving that softbox around and getting the exact same shot, or as close as I can, on the other side. And you piece the two together, and you get this, beautifully lit on both sides. But that brings me to the end of this shoot, so we can have a look at some other photos I got of the bike. Hopefully this has been an interesting insight into how I go about putting a shoot like this together. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you have, please do make sure to hit that like button. And if you don't already, then please do subscribe and maybe tell a few friends. And I will see you next time.